Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of andrewsfootball.com. Welcome to my week 14 preview. Now, if you haven't already, there's this button right down here. See it, see it, see it. Bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. My channel, scientifically proven to make all your wildest dreams come true. Now, I got a special treat for you. Stick around to the end. I got four games. I have been hot lately. So if you want to put some action down, I got four games that you can put action on. So stick around if you want to make some motherfucking money. All right, let, let's start with uh, Thursday night football here. Uh, the Bears have been playing some pretty good football lately. They've won three straight. Uh, what they've been doing is exactly what I said to do. If you've been watching me, I said, here's how, here's what you do if you're Chicago Bears. You dumb down the offense. How do I know they've dumbed down the offense? Because Trubisky is running more. What they're doing is they're doing one, two, read, run. Okay? What they're doing is they're, they're telling Mitchell Trubisky, take your first read, take your second read. If it's not open, just run the ball. They're dumbing down the offense. You got a great defense. So they've won three straight. I can I can tell they're doing that because he's running a lot more. They simplified the offense. They're playing to his strengths. And and I, I thought that even if the Bears weren't winning, they should still stick with Mitchell Trubisky going into 2020. After 2020, you, you can do a variety of different things. But uh, Bears fans are, that were clamoring for Mitchell Trubisky uh, to be fired out after this year or traded no 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 stick with them and they what they do they dumb down the offense now with dallas um i i think dallas basically does the same thing that they're, they're going to do and that's i still have them winning the east okay i still have them winning the east believe it or not but what's going to happen is they're going to win the east they're going to play a very, very, very tough wild card game, uh, probably against the loser of the NFC West or second place in the NFC West, which will either be Seattle or San Francisco. I don't see them winning that game, and I think Garrett's gone after that. Un un unfortunately, because I think he's a fine coach, but but the team has too much talent to be a uh, uh, fighting the struggle, fighting to stay around 500. So hey. Let's start breaking down Sunday's games, okay? First off, a huge game. Uh, Baltimore at Buffalo, 10-2 team versus a 9-3 team. What's at stake here? The one seed. Believe it or not, let me ask you this. If you're a Bills fan, how excited are you that in December you can play for a one seed? That's what you can get with a win. You get a chance for the one seed. Now, keep in mind, they have to beat New England at New England. But they beat Baltimore here. They got a chance for a one seed. They lose. it. They're still going to go to the playoffs. They're just going to go on the road instead of getting a home game. Baltimore, on the other hand, they, they, they're they going to win the North unless something really crazy happens. But they are still fighting for a one seed, Okay. More the right now they got it. Even with a loss, they can still get it. But they really need to continue winning. What a great game! I think these teams match up really well against each other. Baltimore's defense is it, it's kind of funny because the teams do a lot of the same things. Baltimore's defense has played a lot better. Lamar Jackson currently MVP. Buffalo is going to match up very good against Baltimore's offense. Their defense very fast, very athletic, very quick front seven. Fun, fun, fun game to watch. Uh, next game I got here is Cincinnati at Cleveland. Um, Cincinnati, after its first win of the season, did they break the seal? Did they figure out how to win games? Are they going to keep winning? Um, it, this is going to be an interesting game. I really want to see how both teams respond here. Uh, Cleveland is a seven-point favorite. I, I would take Cincinnati in this one, but I kind of want to watch this game. I would, So I don't recommend action, but... Dan, you have to put action on this game. Take Cincinnati and seven. Take Cincinnati and seven, all right? But I, I really want to see how these two teams play. I want to see how Cincinnati responds after a win. Do they? Does the momentum keep going or they win a game? They feel like they got a monkey off their back and get blown out. I don't know. That's why I say don't bet the game, but I, I do think smart play is Cincinnati and seven. Uh, Washington at Green Bay, believe it or not, Believe it or not, even though they started off one and nine, 
if Washington somehow, some way wins in Green Bay, they're in position to win the East. I'm going to say that again. After starting one and nine with a win, they're putting themselves in position to win the East. I'm not saying it would happen, but with a win. Now, when Callahan first took the job, I said the magic number is four. If he gets four wins, he'll have an opportunity to interview with Daniel Schneider for that head coach in vacancy in 2020. The magic number is four. With four games left, he only needs one more. I think if he gets five, that, that almost kind of locks him in there. Six is a guarantee. So it's a very important game. Of course, Green Bay, uh, they're still fighting to win the North. They got a one game lead and they could still get a bye. They could definitely because Saints and, and 49ers play each other this week also. So they need to win this game. Very good game here. Uh, next game, I mentioned Minnesota already. Detroit at Minnesota. Minnesota is uh, the only NFC team that's undefeated at home. So obviously they want to get a home playoff game. Uh, they still have a chance for the North. Detroit. Matt Patricia is 100% on the hot seat. The defenses look terrible. They need to look good so Patricia keeps his job. If they lose bad, don't be surprised if Patricia is fired after the game. Uh, next game, Miami at uh, the New York Jets here. Uh, both teams are really looking forward to 2020. Both teams are looking really good for 2020. The Dolphins are going to have a completely different team. Remember, Three first-round picks, two second-round picks, and the Jets, I, I think, are really putting themselves, even though they lost to the Bengals last week, they're putting themselves in good shape for 2020. Uh, Darnold, remember, he had mono. Uh, the defense kind of kind of was a little rusty, but they're going to add some pieces, and I think both these teams are going to be a lot of fun to watch in, in the 20s. But uh, uh, again, right now, two losing teams, but excited to see this game. Uh, next game, Indianapolis at Tampa Bay. This is a really interesting game because Tampa Bay's been playing better. And Indianapolis, despite uh, two straight losses, they're still they're really mathematically alive for the division. And they're still alive for the wild card. It's, it's slim, but they need a win. Tampa Bay's looked a lot better. So this is going to be a really fun game. Uh, next game, I got uh, the oh, – I'm sorry – Denver at Houston. Uh, believe it or not, this is kind of a tough matchup for Houston. Uh, they're going against a team with a really good defense. Kind of got a spark with the rookie quarterback last week. Uh, Denver, you know, they're going to see can they can lock win two straight. Houston, of course, uh, in, in the AFC South lead after beating New England. They, they Be warned. All right. I think Denver covers nine points, but... Why I don't bet this game is because you got Romeo Cornell against a rookie quarterback. Houston, be careful. This is this is a team that's on the rise. So I, I do like Denver to cover nine points. I wouldn't I wouldn't bet on it. But out of all the games, this would probably be my fifth one. So be careful, Houston. Uh, let's do a little afternoon delight here. Um, uh, Chargers at Jaguars, Minshew Magic's coming back. And this is a smart move for Jacksonville. See what you got with the rookie quarterback. Uh, see if you got something, somebody you can build your team around for 2020, which is, I think, what you should do. Uh, Chargers, of course, uh, pretty much out of playoff contention right now. Uh, they're kind of playing out the string. What they're going to do in 2020 is anybody's guess. So, But this is an interesting game to see how things go. Uh, for the future. Uh, next game is uh, two teams that are still alive for the playoffs, Tennessee at Oakland. Now, a loss here for the Oakland Raiders, that's pretty much it because because you're six and seven, uh, you, you, uh, you, you're you basically two games behind Tennessee. You're not going to catch Buffalo. So a loss here pretty much eliminates you. Even if you go nine and seven, you have to have so many things happen. But with a win, you're tied with Tennessee. Plus, he owned the tiebreaker, so you still got a chance for that six wild card spot. Tennessee, of course, uh, with a loss, are still mathematically alive, but with a win, they're positioning themselves in, in position to go ahead and uh, win the South. Remember, they still play Houston twice, so they want to keep a one game, um, just a one game behind. Now, keep in mind, if Houston loses and Tennessee wins, both teams are tied, still have two games to play. Plus, 
even if they don't win the division, with a win here, they put themselves in good spot for that sixth seed. Um, next game here is uh, Kansas City going to New England. And the reason why I grunted and groaned is um, I hate to say it's Chiefs fans. but and, and keep in mind, I got this right here. 10 betting units on the Chiefs over 10 and a half. So uh, a loss here would put them at 8 and 5. That, that's pushing it because I need three straight wins uh, in order to collect. But bottom line here, New England coming off of a loss, coming back home. Plus, they match up really, really good uh, with the Kansas City Chiefs. So a uh, smart play would be New England to cover three points. Um, Monday Night Football, Giants at Philly. Eli Manning gets the start. And, and I'm kind of excited you know, to watch Eli Manning, maybe his last primetime game. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with him, uh, where he goes. Uh, Philly, of course, with uh, Dallas loss tonight, uh, they have a chance to go ahead and, and win this uh, division. So uh, this is still kind of a big game despite the record, believe it or not. So what did I say? Four games for you. I got four games Four great opportunities for you to win some money. Uh, let's start off San Francisco at New Orleans. It's in New Orleans, so I'm kind of surprised the Saints are only a two-and-a-half point favorite. Go ahead and take them to cover two-and-a-half. They are going to win this game. I've been saying this for a while. I, I love the 49ers. I love how they're building this team. They're not going to win the East, but they're very dangerous in the playoffs. Uh, next game, Carolina at Atlanta. At any time you get... A head coach fired. Usually the team's energized. Uh, Atlanta knows the same thing's going to happen to them. Carolina's a three-point dog in this game. I actually think they'll win outright, but take the three just to be on the safe side. Uh, they, they will win. Uh, next game, Pittsburgh at Arizona. Uh, Pittsburgh's a three-point favorite. I'm a little surprised it's not higher. Because it's not higher, take Pittsburgh. Now, keep in mind, this jumps up to three and a half a board. But if it's three... Count on them to win three, just in case it's a close game. Don't get, don't get snagged on the hook here. And then this is probably my favorite game, Sunday night, uh, Seahawks at Rams. Seattle is a pick -em. Yeah, I know they're on the road, but they, they're going to beat the Rams. That's my favorite. If I had to bet in order, I would take Seattle, San Francisco, or I'm sorry, Seattle, San Francisco and the Saints, take the Saints obviously, but uh, Seattle, then the, then the Saints, Carolina, and then Pittsburgh. Uh, actually, I like Pittsburgh more, but just be careful. Don't don't get bitten by the hook. All right, if it jumps up to three and a half abort, and then with Carolina, you you can pick them to win outright if you want to. But let's say you're going on a three game parlay. Take the three points just to be on the safe side. You can get creative here. You could take, because Seattle game's late, you could bet a parlay and then take the winnings and bet on the Seattle game just so you can double up. You can get a lot of creative um, things that you can do. Keep in mind, if you have any questions, you can always email me at askandrewsfootball at yahoo.com. But those are four games. I have been red hot lately. So listen. If you're a subscriber to Andrews Football, you already know you're one of the greatest people on planet Earth. All your wildest dreams are going to come true. But if you're new to my channel and you haven't done it already, there's this button right here. See it, see it, see it. Bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. Live stream 7 p.m. Central tomorrow. Anything goes. I'll see you tomorrow.